Greetings, Pastor D. My name is Lonnie Sorrell, and I looked at your video that you put on Facebook. And um, some of the things I agree with, but some of the things I don't agree with as a believer, um, I think is a difference. Um, I, all of those things you said are right in terms of being oppressed as a people. But in terms of being a Christian, um, I don't see the oppression applied to my life as the others. Um, I'm not just some person who hasn't been on the other side. Um, when God came into my life, I was sentenced 15 years for armed robbery and got set free to go to Teen Challenge. And in Teen Challenge, I learned about God and God's goodness and was introduced to lots and lots of ministries that when I got out, found out that, you know, they were mega ministry people who came and talked to us. Um, we were introduced to the full gospel businessmen's meetings, and I met a lot of entrepreneur type um, Christians. Um, in Teen Challenge, pretty much every person at the farm had some kind of outside business. I did um, prison outreach for 15 years in uh, Minneapolis here. And um, right now I live in a small town named uh, Bemidji, Minnesota. And I'm up where the reservations are. There are three reservations that surround Bemidji. And I thought I knew what it was as an issue of being an inner city person and street person and that kind of stuff and what's happening. And you know, hearing this buzz. And it's sad when murder is divided in this aspect and not looked upon from a spiritual perspective. I heard nothing you said that said that I have power as a believer to take back my area. And, you know, works are great, but works aren't the supernatural, aren't the powers, aren't a part of the blessing and the benefits that we are as believers. Now, I'm from the South. I was in Atlanta when the Ku Klux Klan did the big rally on Stone Mountain and, you know, was there. Um, I actually was invited to be at the rally in Greensboro, North Carolina, when um, the person came through and shot up people. Um, I was actually invited by some of the, the people who got that together. So chances are I would have been in one of those places where you know, people would have been shot, but I felt in my heart that um, it was like the what we're going after doesn't make sense because the the Ku Klux Klan that's obviously a spirit and not just people that's guiding them. And this thing of murder is it, on both sides. When we can murder ourselves as much as the system is murdering us, or we are murdering more of us than what the system is actually murdering us. And that this thing of oppression of, of people is not just black and white. It's like in this whole message, you know, here and there, you hear a little thing about what the native plight is. But to me, when I got up here, I found out that native people here don't even act like the native people that live in the inner city. The native people in the inner city act like black people. And we get along. Up here, they don't like nobody. And the government attacked them from a system, you know, of oppression. And to me, if we continue to say that we are believers, but we feel that the same things affect us, that the world affect us, then the value of being a Christian means what? Nothing but just going to heaven. Um, and it's not a now God. I was told that it was a now God. And I have been arrested racially. And it was a mistake on the court's half. And that was the fastest because the policeman made a mistake and said it out of his mouth. He couldn't believe he was a black man in a hood walking, you know, at night down this dark area. <laughs> the, the, the sheriffs heard him and I looked at the sheriffs like, you mean to tell me this guy picked me up because of what I had on? They gave me back my money. Um, they put me in with the trustees. I went to court and came out, went to sit down from 
from being transported and they said, Mr. Sorrell, you're out. Now, as a young man, I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have went off and probably would have got beat up and would have been yelling, you know. And it's like this thing of five people, separation, right? Most of the crimes, somebody knows the person who has done it and they're not telling. So we also are helping us be in the situation where we are being predatized by, as you say, the system, you, you as a white man, and, and us on ourselves. And we're giving up excuses, and there is no excuse. When a person has God in their life, that person has favor. And I have seen favor over and over and over again. Even being sick and having to get Social Security, um, realizing that, Hey, I can make a thousand dollars without them affecting my check. And so why not make that thousand dollars? Because really what you get is not enough. And one of the things that I am trying to get out now that I've just found out is I have custody of my grandson and he has some medical issues. So he gets a check. And when they were giving me the information, the lady looked at my face because she was telling me how much money he was going to get. And I'm thinking, well, I've had him for a year. He's lived on my income and that money could be saved for his future. And she looked at me and said, sir, you may not use, take, keep, save his money for it. You have to use his money. And then I thought about that. And I think about how many of us who in ourselves don't get an education, um, use the excuses of being in the inner city or whatever and the reasons why and the hardness of life and don't educate ourselves to get good jobs and things of this nature and we are where we're at. And so, no, that's nobody's fault, especially when you get saved. Once you get saved, those kind of things are supposed to change. Now, I'm totally dyslexic. I got to go to North Central Bible College. I went two years. Um, I got a good job with the Minneapolis Public Schools. They sent me to the U of M Graduate School. And by the, grad, by, by the U of M standards, I only was a freshman with the credits that would transfer. But yet, when they, you know, I let them know, hey, the public schools got me in this program. I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. They gave me a tutor and I actually made good grades. In graduate school and I really appreciate and understand the value and the thinking process that's left out from people who don't even think you know beyond how they write the newspaper if they can read the newspaper so I, I, I'm really glad and you know I, I, I'm blessed to see what your ministry is doing but it just the the message is we got to stop saying it's somebody's fault and address this as it is. That's a spirit that's going around. And, you know, now we as a people and policemen as, as people are afraid. And it's fear. You know, and it's like we haven't been saying to us as a people, take responsibility for where you at and know that with God, you don't have to stay in that kind of situation. And we got to stop giving up excuses for what is. And, you, you know, I'm happy to say that I'm a Republican and I only voted as a Democrat once in my life. And that was even before I was a believer. And I said to myself, then I'm just voting and I don't even know I'm voting because the rest of the people vote this way. And it just seems like something's not right. So I read the platform of the Democratic Party. And the platform and what they're saying is for what they believe does not agree with me as a believer. So that to me is one of the main reasons I can't vote or believe that the government is my provider. The government is not my provider. As you say, the system keeps you down. And I'm finding out. My grandson 
is going to be taken care of because he has medical issues. And it's great that we live in a country that, that we can do that. But the people who are using this system because it takes care of the now, they are taking away the, gen the, the, the kid's future. I came from a middle class family, so when I got time to go, when it was time for me to go to college, there was monies. I was dumb, so I went into the military. Um, when I graduated, I had friends, their parents was able to give them a brand new car, able to give them money for college, you know, and we're saying that this masses of people who are on a system, the future of their kids are being cut off because they are looking at the government and saying, for whatever reason, they are trapped in the situation they're in. Where does the gospel come in and the empowerment in the message that we're being given as people? Thank you. And um, really, I'm not coming against you. I hope you understand that. I would like to partner with you um, in this effort. But it just seems like the spiritual side of this is not being addressed. Thank you.